Good afternoon and welcome to the Oasis. My name's Ed Schenick. I'm the pastor here at Monroeville United Methodist Church. And we're so glad that you took some time this uh, afternoon to come and to be with us and to be still with God, especially in this time of Lent. As we take this time, I'd like to today lift up a piece of scripture that we share at the beginning of every Lenten season. Usually it's an Ash Wednesday scripture, right as we begin the, the, the 40 day journey. And it's Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount talking about some of the things that are important for us to focus on and to stay focused on in these 40 days. So I'd like to share uh, that scripture with you. And I'd like to read it to you from uh, Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, this afternoon. I'll be starting at Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 1. Let us open our hearts that we might hear God's word for us. Be especially careful when you're trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. And when you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure. Play actors, I call them. Treating prayer and prayer meeting and street corner alike like a stage. Acting compassionate as long as someone is watching. Playing to the crowds. They get applause, sure but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it, quietly, unobtrusively. That's the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. 
And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show of their prayers, hoping for stardom, do you think God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you'll begin to sense God's grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and your father knows better than you what you need. With God like this loving you, you can pray very simply. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, Reveal who you are. Set your world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. Yes, Yes, yes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I think every now and then I need to be reminded of those words. That prayer that our lives of faith are really about how God sees us and how God forms and shapes us. In, 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 in subtle ways, if I'm not careful, and I think that I'm not alone in this, It suddenly shifts from how God sees me to how others see me. And the focus suddenly is shifted from God to me. Will people like me? Do people respect me? Am I living in a way that that, uh, people will like? They're not the same thing, not even remotely. And so Lent is that time when we focus on God putting God at the center of our lives and asking the question, am I living this life the way God wants me to live it? Because that's where life is. That's where joy is. That's where life becomes full. And so that reorientation becomes everything. And so prayer becomes a major part of that focus. I used to think way back that prayer, and and there's the image of dialing up Jesus, dialing up God, you know, that God is somehow way up there. And so every once in a while I have to stop and think and, and, and ask God to come to me or ask God to speak with me. I see it very differently now. And I think that's what Jesus is pointing to as well. I think of uh, Rondell Bean, who was a spiritual director, um, talking about prayer as a, our attentiveness to God's presence. God is Emmanuel coming to us in human flesh, in Jesus, but then also in the Holy Spirit around us. God breathes life into the very creation, into the world that's all around us. God is always with us. The question is, are we aware that God is there? I think so many times of, of uh, those days when I come back from work and I'm, I'm really just stressed out and I'm, I'm thinking about this, I have to do that, and, and, and there's my wife and she's there. And, and uh, uh, oftentimes if she gets home early, she makes dinner for us, which I really appreciate. And so we're sitting there at the table and, and one of the days I was there and I heard Kathleen sigh, my wife, and I looked up and here I am on my phone because I'm texting somebody had come in and my daughter was across the table and she's texting somebody else and here's my wife sitting at the table and none of us are even aware. And I wonder if we're that way with God sometimes. Lent is that time when we put down the phones and we open up space. We often think about Lent as giving up, but that's what that's about. Opening, letting go of those things like cell phones and and the different things that we have around us that take our attention to open space. And I love the way Jesus words that. To come to God in just an attitude of simplicity and integrity Be honest with who you are, says Jesus, open and vulnerable. And that's when it switches and changes from being about us to being about God. God says to you and to me, I am with you. 
not with the mask you wear, not with the agenda you're keeping, I'm with you. And the question of Lent and the question of faith becomes, are we with God? Notice the emphasis is not on words. It's on hearts. Be yourself can be difficult because we need to trust God. And, and that's, that's the point. To be still with God. Here's what I want you to do, says Jesus. Find a quiet place, secluded, so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God. And you will be able to sense God's grace. A friend of mine used to say, we need to keep our clay moist. And I kept thinking of that image. And I think that's part of what Jesus is talking about. And our being with God, being aware all the time, as Ron Bean would say, that God is always around us. I think about clay, when you first pick it up, it's hard to move. You know, it's very stiff. And the more you work it, the easier it gets. Over and over, you, you push and move and change. And I think about our spiritual lives as we grow attentive to God's love and grace. The more we're aware of it, the easier the clay moves and changes. And we can shape it. I've always loved that image of the potter, you know, shaping the clay, right? And so often when I see that image, and I know it's God who's the potter, but so often I, I think of the times when I've had the opportunity in classes or one place or another to be working with clay. And I always loved being the potter. So I, not really being aware, put myself in that role. And I forget that in this image, we're not the potter. We're the clay. And I think about what that clay must feel like being pinched and moved. It's uncomfortable, I'm sure. That things, when God is working within us, shape in a way <laughs> that is different than what we intended sometimes. But that's because it's what God intends. And the shape we take is not the shape that we set up by our agendas or our egos. It's the shape that God makes for us and makes us into. What comes out is beautiful when, they're, when that clay is in the hands of the potter. And that's what Lent is. A time when we open ourselves, moisten the soul, clay of our souls and let God move in us. And God shapes us into something beautiful that we celebrate at Easter. And then we open ourselves to a new day and let God do it all over again, that we continually grow in that love. Where are you today? So grateful you're here to take a moment to just be still with God, to let God mold and shape our lives, our souls. Because the promise is true. There is new life. There is always hope when we put the clay of our souls in the potter's hand. Let us do so now with a word of prayer. Loving God, remind us that it's not about us. That fullness of life is when we center ourselves on you. As we pause in the middle of this afternoon with all the things going on around us, remind us you are here. Make us attentive. Help us with your grace to hear your voice, to feel the nudge of your spirit shaping us, calling us to reach out into the life you've given to us to become all you continually create us to be. And remind us that those around us, Lord, were all on that same shaping journey. And as you are working with us, so you're working with them. If you have forgiven us, as you say in your prayer for us, keep us forgiving, keep us loving, keep us growing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good afternoon and uh, good evening. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. And we hope to see you on Sunday. Our services are uh, online at 9.15. And then uh, we are meeting now at 11 o'clock in person. So we hope to see you over the weekend. Take care and have a great rest of the week. God bless. Heaven th
Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. The impossible things in your name, they shall be done. 